مركز التعلم الذاتي ريادتك للتعلم جامعة السلطان قابوس FOB FMS1 mm -hmm. The responsibility of the sailor until they get the items onto the ship. Then the, the responsibility gets into the ocean, until on the you know the middle of the ocean. Okay? And the responsibility then stops. Let's take still another example. What's the difference between DAT, DAP, DDP? Okay. DAT it means delivered at terminal. Whereas DAP delivered at place, whereas DDP delivered duty paid. Okay, so delivered at terminal it means that the items will be delivered until what point? Until you know the customs area. Okay, in there, but um, um, we have to be careful about this one. Okay, and the delivered at place will be delivered toward the end of the place, but not that the delivered at a place, it is delivered at a place in the point of destination, but the place will need to be identified, okay? The, the, it might not be the exact final place. Therefore, you need to identify a place toward the, end, uh, to the, toward the uh, point of destination. But delivered the duty paid, it means that the items are all the way till the end, they are released and they arrive to the most end, okay? Of course, in the delivered at a place, the items, you know, uh, you can specify the, uh, the specify the point toward the destination, but the difference in here is that the delivered the duty paid is that the items the, and the delivered the duty paid the uh, taxes are paid in here. I'm trying to you know show you this one. Okay, uh, um, you see, I'm, I'm using those two because one of them expends something and the other one expends some parts. Uh, let's talk, you know, at the uh, DAP. Okay, uh, we need to be careful in here. Okay. Yes, this one is more detailed, so I, I advise that if you would like to use, then use both of them. Okay, uh, this one is a bit more detailed. When you look at the DAP, DAT delivered at uh, terminal, you can see in here the destination terminal charge delivery to destination. Um, uh, sorry, uh, delivery to destination and imported duties will be uh, will be borne by the whom by the buyer. Okay, the buyer will be paying for the imported duties. But you know, the delivered the duty paid, the seller will be taking care of everything. And the delivered at a place, it will be, you know, delivered all the way till the end at the given place. But you know, the seller won't take care of the items and will, will not release them from the customs. Which means that, and we need to be careful in here, the seller will be taking care of the items until they get out of the port. But at the customs point, he will be waiting for you. At the customs point, he will be taking care of the transportation, but at the customs point, he will not pay. He will not, he will not be, you know, paying for the customs. He will not clear the items. It will be your responsibility to clear the customs. But in the delivery the duty paid, the seller will be taking care of everything. Other ones are pretty similar. You can go through the other ones in detail. By the way, you can easily print this one. You can find it in the, in the internet, or you can go to the International Chamber of Commerce website and you download it, and you can easily read it using the same way. Okay. Okay, so let's move to something else. Cargo insurance. We have talked partially about the cargo insurance, but we need to be careful. Responsibility for insuring if it is addressed by income terms. Okay, that's right. Uh, financial risk, financial losses from international carriers for freight damage or loss are difficult to recover and time consuming. Carrier's liability is limited and minimal. It is important to, you know, to insure the items. Okay, why? Because in international trade, the liability of the, uh, you know, the carriers, international carriers, ocean companies or air companies, their liability is very limited. So if anything happens to your shipment, the, li the liability will be only very limited one and they will not be bearing you for, you know, for uh, covering all your costs. And therefore, it is to your advantage that you cover uh, your items with an additional insurance. Okay? 
Other problems, transportation perils, ocean freight faces considerable obstacles to loss and damage, free delivery comparably, and that's something that you need to be worried about. So you as, okay, as a transportation, uh, as a shipper or as a consignee, you will need to select between risk retention and risk transfer. Where the risk retention it means that you don't actually insure the items, but the risk transfer it means that you insure the items. We need also to be careful about the CIF cost insurance and the freight. Seller is required to obtain insurance only on minimum cover, although that the CIF shows that you know the items will need to be insured by the seller, but the seller will only be insuring the items only on minimum cover, which means that uh, you may need to insure the items further in addition to the seller. Okay. Good. Right from the beginning all the way to the end. In the beginning, you have the cash in advance. In the cash in advance, you pay for the items in advance before you get the items. Okay. Even before the items they move from their origin, you pay for them in cash. So the seller they will get their cash. Of course, there is so much you know risk over you, because you have paid for the items but you haven't got the items. So you will be waiting until you get the items. Before shipment, usual time of uh, <coughs> payment and goods available after payment. Risk to seller, there is no risk because he gets his payment even before the, the start of the, of the trip. Okay? But the risk on the buyer is at highest okay? because he will be waiting for his shipment and he has already paid. At the other extreme, you have the open account. Okay? Um, what we call them in, in, in Arabic, sabr. Okay? Uh, on the other one, the, the, the shipment is delivered and you don't pay anything and you decide, you as a buyer, you decide when to pay for the seller, okay? Uh, usual time of payment as agreed, okay? Um, uh, goods available to buyer before payment, okay? So before you pay, you already have the goods. So as you can imagine, the risk to, buy, to the buyer, to me, I am the buyer, there is no risk to me, but all the risk will be wished on the, the seller, okay? He will be sending the shipment without receiving anything. So it has some trust, you know, he will have to trust you. Uh, of course, over time, this solution might you not know, be a good solution, okay? Either of this one or this one. Okay. Everyone wants to win. That's why we have other solutions. We have the letter of credit. The letter of credit is a practical one, okay? Uh, the seller, they get their money, and at the same time, the buyer, they do not pay. Okay, who pays for the seller? It is the bank, okay? And the buyer, they will pay later on when they get the shipment, they will pay to their bank. I'll talk about this one in a, after we finish all of this process, but that's the idea behind the letter of credit. You obtain it from the letter of the credit, you obtain it from the bank. But we'll talk about the cycle of it, how does it go? Because there are other issues that we will need to cover along with the letter of credit. But it's a good one. There are different types of letter of credit, irrevocable ones and other types, uh, non-irrevocable ones. So uh, uh, we will be focusing on the non-irrevocable ones. Okay, now we'll be covering the freight documentation. What are the documents that you need to have and you need to be aware of when you have an export process or import process? Quite the same thing. You need to have the commercial invoice, the bill of lading, manifest, certificate of origin, packing list, delivery order, bill of entry, uh, purchase order, uh, and other types, okay? Uh, we'll talk about other ones, but these are the main ones. Let's cover each one of those ones. What does it mean? It's the commercial invoice. It is the bill for the goods. Okay. Um, it, it tells you that, you know, this is, you know, the commercial invoice is the official document that is used by customs for calculating the customs. Okay. Uh, it shows the amount that has been paid over the shipment. So it shows the details of the money part. Uh, usually it goes with the shipment or uh, it is sent by banks otherwise to the other bank. We'll talk about this one mainly used for customs declaration, contains information about product description, quantities, value, origin, companies engaged, the buyer, the seller, the origin, the destination, the consignee, inco terms that are used, payment terms, currency, and the certification. So, so many different information, but the main information in here is about, you know, the payment issues, the payment term, and the value of the, the shipment. Okay, I'll, I'll show you some, you know, uh, image of these ones later on. Uh, we also have the bill of lading. The bill of lading acts as a contract between the transportation company and the cargo owner. It provides a receipt for the goods standard to the carrier and evidence uh, 
and evidence of who has title to the goods while transit, while in transit. Ocean bill of lading is for water transportation, and airway bill is for air carrier shipments. Whoever has the bill of lading, he has a title on the goods. Okay. If the bank has the, the, the bill of lading, then they, uh, they have title over the goods and as if they actually own the goods, okay? And they will not release the goods until they get their money. So it is important that if the bank has paid for the shipment, then the bill of lading will be with the bank until the bank they get their money and only they will release the bill of lading, okay? Uh, and who prepares the bill of lading? It is the transportation company, the carrier. So once at the point of origin, you deliver your items to the transportation company, the transport company, they load the items, they prepare a bill of lading, okay? It's like a contract between the, the, uh, the parties involved in the sale and the transportation company that items have been given to the transportation company, so that's, you know, uh, uh, that, sh that shows it's, it's prepared by the carrier. The manifest, a list of all carriers that pertain to a specific shipment for ocean carriers, there will be one manifest for each container, it's prepared by shipping lines. Shipping lines, you know, when they put the items into the ship, you could have one container into the ship, or you could have multiple containers, or you might have, you know, a small shipment that doesn't, you know, qualify for a whole container, maybe only half a container, but the other half of the container, it's for someone else. So you are sharing the container with someone. So where, among all of these hundreds of containers that are on the ship, where is your shipment? In which container? And which containers they belong to your shipment? The manifest will tell this one. The manifest is it's prepared by the shipping lines. Once the items are available into the containers, they write down, this uh, shipper items are available into this container. Or if you have multiple containers, then this container, this container, this container, they belong to this one. Then it's all shown into the manifest, okay? You have then the certificate of origin, a statement that the goods were shipped from the end country in which the exporter is located. Certificate of manufacture provides information about the exporting manufacturer's country. It is prepared by the Chamber of Commerce at the point of origin, okay? Uh, it specifies that the items are were actually, they are exported from actually United States, okay? But sometimes the items, they might actually be shipped from United States, but the items themselves are not manufactured in the United States. They have been shipped from China to United States and from United States to Oman. So the, the point of origin, the exact manufacturer, is not actually United States, but it is China. And therefore, you might need to have another certificate, which is certificate of manufacture, telling exactly, because, for example, in, in Emirates, for example, there are so many items arrive into Emirates, but they're not manufactured into Emirates. And then they are shipped again to, so if the items are actually manufactured in Emirates and they're sent to Oman, then there is no most likely taxes on them. But if the items are coming from outside and only they are through Emirates, to Oman, then they will need to be taxed, okay? So this will specify exactly where the items are coming from, where they are manufactured. Are they within or from outside? Then there's the packing list, which is prepared by the, you know, the, the shipper, okay? At the point, the seller, at the point of origin. A detailed inventory of the contents of the shipment. It itemizes the material in each individual package and indicates type of package, box, drum, carton, and the individual net and the gross weight. So I have shipped, for example, 100 cartons. It will exactly tell, like there are 100 cartons. If all cartons are the same type, this is the quantity in each carton, okay? And this is the weight of each carton. If different uh, the cartons are of different sizes, it will tell how many of each type, okay, of cartons. It details, it's called the packing list. So it is prepared by the shipper once he gets the shipment ready and he uh, makes it available for whoever, you know, he needs it. Then there is the delivery order, a document issued by the carrier to release the cargo to the legal consignee mentioned in the bill of lading. Only with this document, the consignee can clear the cargo with customs and take delivery of the cargo from the port or terminal or depot or whenever or wherever it is stored. As you can imagine, when the items they arrive at the port of destination or the airport of destination, for example, in Port of Sohar or, you know, airport, Muscat airport. Now, it is not possible to just, you know, whoever comes in, you give them your item, the items. You know, the carrier would give them the items. You have to have, you know, uh, some documents. Therefore, uh, the document that will need to be presented to the carrier, it is the bill of lading, okay? You remember, the bill of lading was prepared by the carrier at the point of origin. Other people, they take it and goes back until it gets back to the carrier at the point of destination. When you present the original bill of lading to the carrier and you tell them, these are my goods. You see, I'm holding the original bill of lading, take it, okay? 
Now, when he sees that it is the original one, he takes the bill of lading and he gives you a delivery order. That now, yes, these are your items, you can take them. You can take them from my um, ship to yours, okay? To whatever you want to, you want to take them, okay? But there's some details that we need to know. So a delivery order, it is a release of the items from the shipping line or the airlines, good? Uh, this first presentation is over. There's a second one real quick that would show you the import cycle. Um, but before that one, let's just go through some, you know, image of, of the, you know, transportation documents. Just to have, you know, an idea how do they look like. Okay, where are they? I'm sure, okay, excellent. I know that I have uh, saved them in here. Okay, a door breather. Everything shallow defined. Uh, I've got these documents from a friend of mine, okay, um, very nice person. Um, okay, so you can see by the numbers, everything is mentioned, bill of lading, original envoys. We don't need to get into the details, what is house, what is lines, we're just, you know, worried about, you know, bill of lading in general. Uh, invoice, packing list, certificate of origin, bill of entry, delivery order, health certificate. Okay, if you are shipping something from point of origin to a point of destination, uh, you know, like food, you need to have a health certificate that there's no problem with the food. Okay, um, uh, and that other documentation as well. Okay, that we don't need to get too much. So let's let's look at some. I'll just scan over those ones. So this one is the bill of lading. Okay, see how we will not get into the details. Just look. No, the point is just to see how do they look like. Okay. Uh, they're almost all of them, they have a pretty similar information, but different names. And some of them, they might have some extra information that you might not find it somewhere else. Okay. Um, then, uh, okay, this is again bill of lading. Okay. Still bill of lading. This is the invoice, original invoice. Okay, so this is the commercial invoice. Uh, it states, you know, uh, with regards to the quantity and the money that has been paid, details of it. Okay. Uh, this is the packing list. So you see the packing list, it's a bit different. It shows exactly the, the boxes and everything, one by one, what goes in. It, it's like, you see, these are pellets. Okay, they are pellets, so it shows exactly what it is. The quantity in each pellet, net weight, gross weight, dimensions, even the dimensions of the items in the pellet, they are mentioned. This is the certificate of origin, okay. European community. Uh, this is the bill of entry, uh, the customs, okay, bill of entry. Um, bill of entry is something that, you know, once you finish from the customs, you get the bill of entry. Okay, although you file the bill of entry, to the, you fill, you buy, you file the bill of entry to the customs, then you get a confirmation of the bill of entry. The bill of entry is the one that is telling you, telling everyone that you have cleared customs. Okay, so once you get that one confirmed from the customs, then you can take it inside the port. You tell them like, you know, here's the bill of entry. Now everything. Now you can take your, you know, shipment out. Okay, uh, the delivery order will give you a permission that now you can take the items, but you will not be able to take the items out until you pay the customs and until you pay other fees of the port or the airport. Here's the delivery order, okay. Uh, two, it, it's mentioned that to the order of whom. This is the health certificate, okay. Export Inspection Agency, Mumbai, India. Okay. So these are, you know, Indian, uh, you know, uh, documents. It's uh, for a ghee. Uh, what is this one? Export port document. Okay, some other documentation, export documentation. Uh, as I told you, there are so many documentation, but these were the main ones. Export invoice, which is similar to that one, but that's the original one. Okay, here are the documents. Okay, so now you have some idea of how do these items they look like. Uh, now, you know, um, the, uh, they're trying now in Oman, they have developed a system called 
uh, Bayan system, maybe you have heard about Bayan. Yes. Okay, well they want to make everything electronic. Okay, but it's going to take quite time, you know, until you convince all partners to actually uh, move from a manual system to an electronic system. Okay. Um, but it's a quite good one because if you can think about all of these documents, so just imagine all of these organizations are connected through a system and they all deliver their documents electronically, then you don't need to run everywhere as everything will be available and you can access the items. And not only you, everyone can access whoever allowed, they can access the items. You don't need to make so many different couples for everyone. Okay, good. So now um, we, we will look at the uh, import cycle, or import process. Uh, this is not my presentation really, uh, it is a presentation of the same guy. Uh, this one is the CEO of Logistics and Projects of Kim Giram Das, uh, Mr. Jose. Uh, uh, so, uh, I'm using his presentation, it's um, quite nice. So as, as you can see, this one is the, uh, this is the export cycle from India from the farms, it's for the mangoes, okay? And then until it goes to the, uh, from the farm until the, uh, then it's packaged, then into the, uh, uh, onto the truck, and then inspection until it goes to the customs, and then uh, the steep dooring, uh, the, the loading process, until they load it into the, this on, we're gonna get into the other details, okay? And this is the import cycle, I believe, okay? In fact, it shows everything. It shows the export and the import. But you know, I'm, I'm just you know, um, uh, I'm perceiving as as if like you know, you are importing mangoes from India. Okay, this is at the point of destination in Oman. So the ship will arrive. Then the items are uh, unloaded, as you can see, then cleared and passed, and then the transportation until they get to the retailer. So that's you know, um, in in a photo style. Now, okay. Uh, this one is the uh, detailed one. Okay, so the buyer will prepare a purchase order, confirming, you know, or telling, you know, that they are actually want to buy something. After they negotiate with the seller, they'll prepare a purchase order. That purchase order, they can make several copies of it. So they send one copy to the uh, to the um, uh, to the seller. The seller will confirm that you know this guy has is actually buying something from me. So he will return with a confirmation that yes, he is actually buying. Now, once the seller, the the the, the I mean the buyer in Oman, they get the confirmation of the purchase of order. Then, what happens later on? Okay. Let's take it step by step. Okay. Um, we are assuming in here that we are talking about a revocable uh, letter of credit, okay? Using not, you know, cash in advance or open account, the more practical one. So what would happen now? Using the purchase order with the terms of payment specified and uh, the, 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 uh, the buyer, me, in Oman, I'll be going to the bank and I'll tell them and I'll apply for a letter of credit. I'll tell them that I am, I'm buying this one, as you can see, from United, or now from India, okay? And uh, I'm, I'm, I would like to get a letter of credit, okay? Uh, you guarantee me I'll, that I'll, 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 I'll be paying you later on. So based on some protocol, then successfully he would get, for example, you know, a letter of credit from the bank, okay? The letter of credit then, this recoverable letter of credit, the buyer, they send them to the, to the seller in, in Mumbai, in, in India, okay? Now, once that guy, he gets the items, he gets the letter of credit, now he is in a safe position, that guy, he, that he has a letter of credit. It's a guarantee for him that if he releases the item, he will be getting his money. It's a guarantee by the bank. I'm guaranteeing you that you will get your money, no problem. So now what happens after this guy, he gets the items, he gets the letter of credit, he will release the items to the you know, transportation company, and he will get the bill of lading from the, uh, from the transportation company. Okay. Now the items they have went to the to the transportation company, and he has the bill of lading from the carrier from the transportation company. He will be taking the letter of credit, as well as you know uh, the uh, the bill of lading, the original bill of lading, the commercial invoice, the purchase order, and all other documents, packing list, certificate of origin, all of those health certificate, and he will go to the bank and will tell him, 
this is an or this is a letter of credit. It is you know directed to you. Of course, this bank in Oman will be mentioning the bank that the seller will have to deal with in Bombay. Someone that the bank of Muscat, for example, they deal with another bank, for example, in India. So he will take those items to him, these papers, and he'll tell him here is, you know, the bill of lading. They show that I actually released the items. They now they were the carrier. Okay, take your money, give me the bill of lading, give me the documents, and take your money. Now the items is under the ownership of whom? The bank, the bank of destination. He has all the items, and he has the ownership of the shipment. Now the shipment is moving with the transportation company. It goes throughout the way until it gets to Oman. Now these items, now the bank will talk to the bank on Oman and will tell him I have all the documents. Okay, uh, I have the bill of dating and everything. You pay me, I'll pay you. Okay, I'll, I'll get you the documents. So the bank of Masqat, he will pay him and this guy will send the documents to the bank of Masqat in Oman, all the items. So all the items, they will be moved to the bank of Masqat and the bank of Masqat will have all the items with, with the, the, the documents with him. Okay, and he has the bill of dating. Now who is the owner of the items? The bank Masqat in the destination. You got the point? The bank of Masqat in the destination. Okay, uh, so the bank of Masqat in the destination now, they have the items and the items now are traveling. He has the ownership of the items and the items are traveling until they get to the point of destination, the port of destination. Okay, we'll get to that level. So this is what it shows in here. Okay, letter of credit, title of goods goes to the other bank. Title of goods it means through the bill of lading. So this, these are the documents that needs to be, you know, ready for the customs clearance. Okay, when, once the item they arrive in Oman, uh, but, but, but before we get to that one, you know, when the items are shipped at the point of, this, at the point of origin onto the, you know, the carrier, let's say a shipping line, now that shipping line will inform the shipping agent in Oman that there are a number of items that are coming on their way to Oman, okay, and these are the list of items, the manifest and everything, these are the details of the item on the ship. Now, once the items, you know, the documents, the other documents, they arrive, the manifest and other documents, and to the uh, shipping agent in Oman, when the, you know, the, the, the shipment or the, the shipping line gets close to the uh, Oman, the ship gets close to Oman, he would inform the buyer in Oman. He would inform me, and he will tell me, your shipment is about to arrive, okay? You need to move, okay? Get ready to release the items. Okay, you will need to go and buy, you know, pay the money for the bank, get the original bill of lading and the document from the bank, and then you will need to go to the customs to release your items from the, from the port. Okay? I'm telling you now so that you get ready, rather than you, know, you wait, you don't know how long will this process take, and then you might be, end up paying money into the port. So these are the items, okay? original bill of lading, original invoice, original packing list, original certificate of origin, delivery order, Original health certificate, authorization letter from importer, um, uh, bank guarantee if original documents not available. Um, of course, there is an assumption in here. Okay, it doesn't show exactly in detail. There is an authorization letter from importer. For example, if I don't know about this hassle, the exact details of how to go here and there and there, then I might authorize someone, okay, a customs clearance person or a freight forwarder. You take care of everything. Okay, there is authorization letter, took care of everything, take the documents, do whatever, okay, get me the items out of the port. Then he will get the he will take all of those documents from the bank and he will go to the port with all of these items. With the original, I will say, before, first, with the original bill of lading, the most important document, let's be focused, with the original bill of lading that is now with the available in the bank mascot. Once you get, you pay money to the bank of mascot, you get the original bill of lading along with other documents. Let's leave other documents. They're not as important as the original bill of lading. Take the original bill of lading, go to the port, and show it to the carrier now. Okay, here is my original bill of lading. It means that now I am the owner. Show you that I am the, I have the title, I'm the owner. Okay, now once the shipping line, they see this one, they take it from you. It's like a cycle, you see now? It goes back to the carrier. The carrier, they take the ship, the, 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 uh, uh, bill of lading, they give you a delivery order. 
Okay, a delivery order, it tells you now, yes, we are telling you that these are your items. This is the delivery order and we allow you that to take your items. All what you need now to go is to, to go to the customs and you pay the customs. Now, when you go to the customs, you will need to have a delivery order. They need to know that you have actually paid for the money and everything is all right. Okay, so you go to the customs with all of these documents and you file a bill of entry to them, a bill of entry. Now they look at all of these documents, they found out how much they need to pay customs and everything. Once everything is done, the bill of entry is issued and confirmed. You take the bill of entry and then you go to the wait to the port again. Okay, to the port again. Are you following up? Okay, you take the bill of entry and you go back to the port. With the bill of entry, now you can release your shipments. Okay, but let, let's get some other details. Okay, let's let's go on with the with the uh, Whatever, you know, at every point, you will need to know how much do you pay, okay? You as the seller, it would be specified at the bank, at the, at the bill of lading, how much do you need to pay to the bank, based on the, you know, the, the, uh, the income terms. Uh, do you need, of course, you will need to pay for the original, I will say, for the, for the uh, value of the items. If you are buying, you know, mango for 500 Oman Real, that's no issue, you will need to pay for them. But then, you know, uh, how much will you, you know, um, um, of course, you will be paying for even for the transportation cost. But under, under the eco terms, you need to find out how much will go into the price in addition to the 500 that you will need to pay and how much you will need to arrange for yourself. In other words, if it is your responsibility to arrange for a transportation company from the port all the way to your warehouse, that transportation company, the money that you will need to the transportation company, don't include it into the bank. You don't give it to the bank because you are arranging for the shipment yourself. So you take care of the responsibility. So only you pay until you get to the port. If you are using uh, uh, delivered at the terminal, at the terminal, at the de point of destination. But if it's delivered duty paid toward the end, then it wants payment. You pay once to the bank, the seller will take care of everything. He will have representative at, the, at Oman and they will take care of the customs clearance. You are just waiting and the items are moved until you get all of them, okay? But you only need to show the payment to the bank, you pay them. Once you get the original bill of lading, then everything will be taken care of. You only need to take the original bill of lading and you give it to the, that party, uh, the, the representing the, uh, the, the seller, and he will be taking care of everything. Uh, so here is the customs clearing agent. Now, this is not the customs. This is the agent that the broker that you specify, he will be taking care of your details. Uh, collect all documents from importer. So you authorize them. They take the paper from you, collect delivery order from shipping line, some documents for clearance in ports and customs, clear cargo from port and customs, arrange cargo examination, hand over cargo to transporter after clearance for delivery to warehouse. Those, they do everything, they get the items out and they deliver them to the real warehouse. The process is over, okay? I'm not focusing on the other side, I'm just focusing on the, on the importing part, okay? I'll get you some more details, uh, you bear with me, and it's just, you know, uh, finish these ones. Um, uh, th this is, you know, it's to show you the hassle of all of those documents. It, you, I can't show you now because of all of these documents moving around. So it, it's, you know, not easy to have one flow as you will need to discuss several things. Uh, the, what will be the rule of the shipping agent? Who is the shipping agent? Now, when the Marisk, for example, lines, they arrive in Oman or the shipping line when they arrive to Oman, okay, someone will need to take care of the ship and everything. It is the shipping agent. As we have talked about this one last time, they represent the ship owner in the country. They do not represent the owner, the, the, the owner of the shipment. No, they do not represent the importer, not the exporter. They represent the ship itself. Okay? They declare the ship in the port, arrange bears, submit manifest to port and customs, appoint steep door and discharge cargo so that items are unloaded, pay port charge, collect original bill of lading, collect freight for FOB cargo, pay all charge in the port and everything. Clear the shipments, clear everything. Clear the ship of all the items that needs to be unloaded into Oman. Not only for you, but for everyone. It's a whole process for everyone, okay, with regards to that ship. Okay. Uh, there's so many details in here, okay, uh, that we don't need to get into all of this one. The ship of owner, of, uh, the ship owner, for example, like Marisk, they need to have a ship ag shipping agent. That we, not, we don't need to look at, okay. Customs, what is the responsibility of customs? 
implement rules, prevailing rules and regulations of the respective country. They act as representatives of every ministry to enforce regulations of different ministries. Ministries while exporting and importing, collect customs and duty, scrutinize the authenticity of the documents to ensure through examination that cargo declared on document is correct. So the way you should imagine, you know, the customs, they, as if they represent all the ministries in Oman. Okay, whoever has, you know, any issue with imports, they will be sending their rules and, you know, details to the customs. And the customs will apply them to every shipment that goes into Oman. The Ministry of Health, Ministry of Finance, Ministry. Of course, the money that is collected is sent to the Ministry of Finance for collection. So they take care of all of this. So they represent the Ministry of Finance, they represent Ministry of Health. They will need to do inspection. The inspection is a bit random. If they feel that the items they need to be inspected, then they go and open the container and they inspect your items one by one. You could lose everything okay, at the customs. The Port Health Department, of course, within the port. Okay. Uh, the Port Health Department, they make sure that the crew that comes onto the ship, they are all healthy. Okay. If they, um, they get out of the ship into Oman, they do not spread diseases into Oman. They ensure that you know the, uh, the cargo has no problem and no health problems. And they do other things as well. Now we don't need to, to, to look at the immigration. Uh, the freight forwards we have talked about already. Okay. Steve Doring companies are the company responsible for unloading and loading the shipment into the port. We don't need to. Okay. Uh, we, we, we don't need all of this detail now. We know it. Okay. So did you get the, the basic idea? My, the, the basic, uh, the, 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 the most important point is did you understand the cycle from the beginning till the end? Let's review it real quick. Okay. You prepare a purchase order, you as a buyer in Oman, okay, uh, you send the purchase order to the seller, they get you a confirmation that yes, you are actually purchasing something from me, you take the confirmation with the amendments and everything to the bank, you apply for a letter of credit, you get the letter of credit, you take the letter of credit, you send it to the seller in um, uh, India, the, that one, with the letter of credit, they release the items to the carrier, they get the bill of lading. They take the bill of lading with the letter of credit to their bank, they get their money, they give them the letter of credit and the bill of lading. Now, the bill of lading moves with other items from India to Oman, okay? They arrive into Oman. Now, the Bank of Oman is the owner of the items and they have the titles, okay, real quick. Now, once your items, they arrive at the port or very close, they get close to the port, you get an, you know, a notice from your shipping agent. If you deal directly with the shipping agent, they send you an email or something, they tell you that your shipment has arrived. Okay, here are details. Okay, or if you have appointed another company, like you know, uh, um, uh, a freight forwarder, then the freight forwarder would go to the shipping agent and they will have in connection with the shipping agent. Anyway, you get an arrival notice that your items are on the way or they have arrived. You take the arrival notice and you go to the bank. Okay, you show the bank that my items are coming. Okay. You pay, th there is a point in there, whether you are allowed to check your items, are they the right items or not, that depends on the contract between you and the transportation company and other things. So it uh, depends on the type, you know, of the bill of lading that you are using. There's so many of them, okay? But we're assuming that you're gonna pay first, okay? The, the bank, you're gonna get, you know, the original bill of lading now with all the documents from the bank, you take them to the, inside the port, you show that, you know, that your items, you know, you are the original owner of the items, you give to original bill of lading to the carrier real quick, you get the delivery order from them, you take the delivery order with other documents that you already have, commercial invoice, packing list, and all of those ones, you take them to the customs. You go to the customs and you file bill of entry. You get confirmed, you pay the customs and everything, assuming there is no inspection. If there is an inspection, it goes on in between this process, they inspect your items, successfully they pass, you get the, or the, the bill of entry, you take the bill of entry, you go inside the port, okay, and you show them that you have paid everything. Give me now my items, I can take them. Taman, of course, you will need to pay other things as well in there, okay. Um, uh, then you get your items out, okay. You, you need to pay port charge, okay, other than customs charge, other than handling charge, you will need to pay maybe sometimes port charge to get out of the gate, okay, of the port. Okay. Uh, uh, we are done, but you know the final one. Just you know, just to make sure that you know we have covered everything. Uh, this is just you know to look at this process. Uh, let's let's just follow this one. Uh, this is 
uh, a general cargo seaport, a customs clearance process, a detailed process. We almost know now everything, but you know, there are some additional items in there, you know, into the customs clearance process. Providing this, I brought this one from AMLS, Al Medina Logistics. Maybe you have heard about Al Medina Logistics company. They have provided me with this document and other documents as well. Providing copy of shipping documents, pre alert to AMLS. Providing copy of statutory documents and authorization letters. So now, Al Medina Logistics will be the freight forwarder and will be an authorized person to clear the items from the customs. They are, will be the one. Al Medina Logistics, they have their trucks. They are the freight forwarders, they are brokers, they are everything. So they'll take care of everything for you, okay? Once we give them the authorization to execute customs clearance on behalf of the consignee, on behalf of me, they liaise with the carrier for arrival information. They get information that items are about to arrive, then obtain cargo arrival notice from the shipping line, then obtain delivery order from shipping line, okay? Uh, we assume in here that you have already paid, the, 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 and you, you already have the original bill of lending, and you give it to the, to the broker or to the agent. Okay, so they have the original bill of lading. They prepare some type of estimara, submit documents to customs. Customs, they will check the HS code verification, harmonized codes. Every item on earth, it has a code. Every item on earth, it has a code, okay, at customs, and it's an international one. So the customs will tell exactly which of items that you have, and they will find out, you know, the fees that, you know, the custom duties that you will need to pay for all of this one from the commercial invoice. Then customs inspection, if applicable, if there is no customs, you pay the customs a duty, then you get the bill of entry generation. Once you get the bill of entry, documentation center, uh, they document all the items, the preparation of CCR or container con clearance release order from the, uh, from the port to release you know, the shipment. Okay. Uh, so first, they give you a delivery order by the shipping line. And then you get a container clearance release order when you get back to the port, but this one is from the port itself. Then you make the delivery, the, the, uh, the authorized company, they make the delivery, load the cargo onto the consignee's trailer, payment of portage charge, you see there are still some portage charge that needs to be paid, collection of gate pass from the port after payment of portage charge until you get to the delivery of cargo to customer and obtain uh, proof of delivery. So the items are released from the port and they leave the port to the, to the uh, final destination. Uh, how long does it take, generally? Only one day? Half a day? L let's just see the days, not the hours. Half a day? Uh, one day in there in the middle? Two days? One Three days and a half? Around three days and a half? Okay, three, four days. So it takes around, you know, three, four days to clear your items from the, uh, this is not for the whole process. Only when the items arrive at the port, that only process takes around the three days to release only one shipment. Uh, it's a, you know, they're now they're trying to reduce it to only a few hours. Instead of a week or more, to only a few hours and the items are with you. Okay? So that's about it. Thank you for listening.